Hey everybody, one that was bored, never boring. Today on the channel, we're going to be doing a full Monty playthrough of Dungeon Quest. That means we are using not just the core game, but we are using two heroes from the Heroes for Dungeon Quest expansion, and we have thrown in all of the extra content from the Catacombs expansion, with the exception of the amulets, because you can't use the amulets in solo games. Not even solo games like this one, where I am going to be playing as two characters simultaneously. In this playthrough, we are going to be using Thargrim the Dark Lord, the Chaos Warrior from the Heroes for Dungeon Quest expansion, my personal favourite, and my pick. And he will be facing off against Rildo the Crafty Thief, who is actually the pick of Antek Marunovic, the subscriber who kindly donated my copy of the Catacombs expansion. And if you're interested, painting guides for both of those miniatures are available on the channel. But enough about that, as you can see we have them set up in the two bottom corners of the dungeon. Normally I would start them at diagonally opposite corners, but it's just a little bit easier for me to film this way. And if we look over to the left we can see that Rildo has the healing ring. He can use that at the start of one of his turns to restore 5 life points. While Thargrim is starting with the Ring of Luck, which he can use at any point during the game to re-roll one dice that he doesn't like the result of. Both Rildo and Thargrim have some interesting special abilities, but I'm not going to go through those now. I will go through them as they come up in gameplay. At this point, I'm just going to start playing. Thargrim is the first player, so he will go first. Before he activates each round, we will advance the turn tracker on the left side of the board. Anybody who has seen previous playthroughs will know that if that turn tracker ever gets to the skull at the end of the track, the dungeon closes and our brave but foolish heroes are doomed to die in darkness. So the tracker advances. And on our turn we can either search a room we're in, unless it's one of the rooms that isn't searchable, or we can move into a new location. We are going to advance to the north, that's to this space here. And it's a good start for Thargrim, it's the checkerboard room. We have to position this so that the arrow, this white arrow here, is pointing away from the doorway that we have just entered by. And then Thargrim advances into that room. And I suppose I should point out what we're doing in this dungeon. We are trying to get to this central area of the board here. That is the dragon's lair, that is where all the good treasure is. We want to get in, nick some treasure and get out before we die horribly. And of course, because we have entered the new room, we have to draw the top card from the room deck. Clearly at the moment, the gods of chaos are pleased with Thargrim. They're giving him an easy start. Next, Rildo will move. He is also going to move north. And it's an equally good start. It's actually a mirror image room to the one that Thargrim had. Rildo sneaks in and we draw a room card. We have found a dead adventurer we can choose to investigate the body if we wish to, and of course we do. We draw the top card from the corpse deck, and unfortunately, or perhaps fortunately, it is nothing. The sun advances, and that's how quickly Dungeon Quest plays. Let's get moving with turn two with Thargrim. He's going to advance to the east because it's usually a good idea to move away from the edges of the board if possible. It reduces the risk of getting trapped in dead ends. We have drawn a room with a portcullis. When we advance into this room, the portcullis will slam shut behind us, barring our retreat, although we will have opportunities to get back through it if we need to. And despite that portcullis, we still need to draw a room card. The room is empty, ominously so. Rildo is going to step to the west. And unfortunately, he has found himself a trap. Because this is a trap room, we do not draw a room card, instead we draw a special trap card. With a creak of ancient gears, the floor opens beneath us. We have stepped on a trapdoor. The trapdoor is actually a card from the base game. Normally you would fall down and then you have to try and get back out. But because we are playing with the Catacombs expansion, if we fail an agility test and fall down the trapdoor, we will end up in the Catacombs. Fortunately, Rildo has an agility of 9, so he has a good chance of passing this test. We have to roll a d12, and we need to get 9 or less. And that's a 6, so we successfully avoid the trap. A lucky escape for Rildo. We advance the day tracker, and Thargrim is going to travel north. 
he has stumbled upon a chasm here. We will take a room card as normal, but on my next turn, we will only be able to leave by this exit here. We cannot cross the ravine. Fortunately, no dark, sinister creatures clamber from the depth of the chasm. This room is otherwise empty. Rildo will head north, and he's found a rotating room. Rildo advances into the room, and as soon as he does, the room rotates 180 degrees, blocking his return trip. Fortunately, we are still heading in the right direction, and we do not have to draw a room card this turn. The day tracker advances. Thargrim has no choice but to head east. It's just a regular room, unfortunately, because of where the arrow is, we don't get to position it so that the path is heading towards the Dragon's Horde. Of course, we draw a room card. And of course, because it's one of my Dungeon Quest playthroughs, the room is empty. Come on, Rildo, head north, find something interesting for us, for crying out loud. It's a crossroads, this is good news. Gives us lots of options for getting closer to the Dragon's Horde. And we draw a room card. Well, I said I wanted to see something interesting, and it's about to kick off. We have found a vampire, one of the creatures from the Catacombs expansion. Rildo has been surprised by a vampire. The vampire attacks swiftly, trying to bite him, and then turns into a bat and flies off before Rildo can defend himself. We have to roll less than our agility or armour, whichever is higher. As our armour is only 4, we will be using our agility of 9. And it specifically says we have to roll less than. And that is an 11. That is a failure. Rildo, despite having a very high agility score, has failed an agility test because Dungeon Quest is like that sometimes, and he has been infected with the Curse of the Undead. He must immediately lose one life point and will lose a further life point at the start of each turn from now on. The only way to survive is to get out of Dragonfire Castle, where your companions will be able to cure you. If you die, you will rise as a vampire in three days' time and become a guardian of Dragonfire Castle for all eternity. So now, Rildo has two ticking clocks to worry about. One, his health bar, and two, the daylight tracker. We lose a life point, and we will place this card beside Rildo to hopefully remind me to do it every turn. Fortunately, Rildo does have that Ring of Healing, which can restore five life points, which does buy us a little bit more time. It's just a shame his life point tracker isn't a little bit longer. Sometimes size is important. The sun advances. Thargrim continues his journey east. And clearly Thargrim has entered by the crumbling part of the ruins because he has found another chasm. Fortunately, the way this one is positioned, we can venture north next turn, which does get us closer to the dragon. We draw a room card. Yeah, spiders. Now this could be a problem. When you face the giant spiders, you can either flee to the previous tile you were on, or you can stay and fight. If you attempt to flee, there's still a chance you could get stuck in a fight anyway. And of course, if you are successful, it's going to cost you time to go back into the room again next turn, and continue on your way. I think I'm probably going to risk entering combat with the spiders, which, knowing my dice rolling, may be foolish. To fight the spiders, I have to pick three numbers. I'm going to pick the numbers one, two, and three. I then have to roll a d6. If I roll one of the numbers I've selected, I have successfully killed the spider. And of course, I roll a six. That means I will lose one life point, I stay where I am, and next turn I will have to fight the spider again. It's now Rildo's turn. He loses a life point from his vampiric bite. And then we can continue on our way. We are going to head to the west. And this is a fantastic draw now that we're under time pressure. We have found a corridor. That means we can place this, move into the corridor, and immediately move again. And I think it would make the most sense to head north now. And that is not a bad pull either. It's a regular room. It's a shame that I didn't head west. It actually would have been a little bit better if I'd gone west instead. But we can work with this. We draw our room card. And we have found an orc. It's time to fight. In Dungeon Quest, when you find a monster, you have three options. You can attack, 
you can wait and see what happens, or you can escape. Now, Rildo does have a very cool special ability. He has some throwing daggers that he can throw at an enemy before revealing the number of hit points the enemy has or how the enemy is going to respond to you. It would be quite good to show you how that mechanism works. This could, for all I know, be my only opportunity to show you how it's going to work. But in this particular situation, trying to escape is probably the cleverer option because if I successfully escape, I will move back into the corridor I was just in and would immediately get to bounce on to the next space. But what the heck? Let's throw some daggers. At the moment, I don't know how many life points the orc has. I have to specify now how many daggers I am thinking of throwing. I am going to throw two. Next up, I have to pick a combat card for the orc. There are three cards, Mighty Blow, Slash and Leap Aside. Normally, one of the other players would pick one of these cards for you so you don't know what it is. For this playthrough, as I am here on my own, I'm going to randomly draw one of these cards. So these cards, I will shuffle them and I will place one down without knowing which one it is. Next, I have to select two cards for myself. Again, we have Mighty Blow, Leap Aside and Slash. I have to try and match the card that has been played for the Orc. So um, I'm just going to pick Slash and Leap Aside. Why not? Those cards are placed down and then we reveal which card the monster has. The monster had Slash, I picked Slash as one of my cards, so the first dagger I threw has hit, and it will inflict D6 wounds. That's five, that's a big hit. But I elected to throw two daggers, so I now repeat the process again for the second dagger. I pick one card at random for the monster. I pick two cards for me. We reveal the monster's card. It's a mighty blow, that's another hit, so we get to inflict another d6 wounds. Only a 2 this time, so we've inflicted 7 wounds total. That is proper average from 2 dice rolls. Next we have to draw a monster card for the orc, and we have to look under the attack section of this card to see what the orc does. And we can see that having inflicted 7 life points of damage on him, it doesn't matter at all. He just flees anyway. Finally, I get to roll to see if I can recover the two daggers I threw. For each dagger, I roll a d6. On an even number, I get to take it back. On an odd number, it is lost. It is stuck in the back of that fleeing orc. That's an odd number for the first one, so I've definitely lost one. And that, of course, is an odd number for the second one. So I have lost both of those daggers. They were clearly very firmly wedged in that orc's spine. I need to mark those daggers as being lost on my character sheet. Rildo only has two daggers left. Busy turn for Rildo, but we're all done. It's the end of the round. We advance the day tracker, and now Thargrim is stuck in combat with this giant spider. I'm going to pick the numbers 1, 2, and 3, and I'm going to roll a d6. This time I have rolled a 3. I have successfully killed the spider. Now as far as I'm aware, even though I have killed the spider, that is still the end of my turn. That means it's time to deal with Rildo. We lose a life point from our vampire bite. And of course we're going to head north. And it's another corridor. That means we will get to move immediately again into a new tile. And that is an incredibly good pull. That is a crossroads, and next turn we will be able to go west, and we are directly in line with the Dragon's Chamber. Of course, new room means new room card. We have found another dead adventurer. Clearly that vampire has been busy in this area of the dungeon. Do we want to explore the dead adventurer? Of course we do. Do we find nothing? Of course we do. But that is the end of the turn, so we advance the Sun Tracker. Now Thargrim is on a chasm space, he only has the choice of going north, so that's where he's going. And that's not the best room in the world he could have drawn, but it is not the worst either. And we draw a room card. We have found a crypt. Do we wish to explore the crypt? Of course. We take the top card from the crypt deck 
and it is an amulet from the Catacombs expansion. Because I cannot use an amulet in this playthrough, I'm going to discard that card and draw again. This time we have found jewellery of a different kind. We have found a bracelet worth 120 gold pieces. Thargrim is the first of our heroes to find something of value. That ends Thargrim's turn. It is Rildo's turn. He has to lose a life point. Next turn, hopefully we will still be alive and we will use our healing ring to restore five life points. For now, we are just going to travel west. We can hear the dragon snoring from here. And Dungeon Quest continues to be a fickle mistress. Look at this. Because of the direction we are approaching from, we basically get a tile that would in other circumstances be perfect, but in this case means our way into the dragon's horde is blocked. And of course, we have to draw a room card. It's a death warrior. Um, what did I say a minute ago about if I survive until the next round? Death warriors are really mean. If I had four daggers in my possession, I would absolutely whip all four of them at this death warrior. However, I only have two daggers and daggers deal d6 minus two damage against death warriors. So just throwing two daggers, even if they both hit, there's a good chance this thing is going to survive. And then I'm going to have to fight it in unarmed combat and it's going to get messy. I'm going to attempt to escape. That means I have to draw a monster card. We draw the top card from the monster deck. We look at the escape section. We look for death warrior and against all the odds, we manage to escape. That is quite fluky. I think it's quite difficult to escape from death warriors. I think they normally stab you in the back. That means I now have to move back into the tile that I was in previously. Not great, but I live to fight another day. Speaking of which, the counter advances. Thargrim's going to head east. The tiles are really not going my way at the moment. Um, they continue to send me on a little merry dance. We draw our room card. It's a sneak attack, a sneaky orc. This is unfortunate. I have to roll a d12 and minus my luck and my luck is only five, and that is the number of hit points that I take from this attack. And that is a 12. Minus my luck of five would be seven hit points. Because I started the game with 13 life points, that's not an insurmountable amount of damage. I can continue with that, but I do have the ring of luck, which allows me to reroll one dice, and I am quite tempted to reroll that 12. Although if I do that, the ring is gone. And if I have to test luck later on, or I have to test agility to stop myself from falling down the pit, there's a very good chance I'm going to die. It's a tough decision, but I am going to re-roll. So my ring of luck is spent. And we re-roll this dice. That's more like it. That's a four. Minus my luck of five means I take no damage from this sneaky orc attack. But now that my mighty Chaos Armor has deflected that attack, I'm going to use Thargrim's special rule. Thargrim has the Helm of Terror. This costs me one life point to use, so I have to take one life point off my health tracker. I now have to roll the d6 four times, and I'm looking to roll a total of 13 or more. Five. Four. That puts me at nine with two rolls left. That's a three, putting me at 12. So obviously with my last roll, I roll a two. That's a total of 14. My Helm of Terror activates successfully and the monster flees in terror. Combat is over. Happy with that result, that went well. Next up, it's Rildo's turn to activate we lose a life point, and now because we have taken five damage, we are going to activate our ring of healing to restore those five life points, taking us back up to 10. And now I'm going to sneak back into the chamber that I revealed last turn and uh, hope that the death warrior has wandered off. We draw a fresh room card and it's a goblin. Let's throw a dagger at the goblin. We're only gonna throw one dagger because goblins don't have a lot of health. So we randomly pick one card. We pick two cards for ourselves, and then we reveal the monsters card. 
and this time things do not go well. The goblin leaps aside, dodging our slash and our mighty blow. The dagger has missed its mark. That means the goblin gets to make a free hit on us and we take one life point of damage. I only chose to throw one dagger, so we now go into the combat situation. We draw a card from the top of the monster deck to see how the goblin reacts. And as it turns out, the goblin flees. Clearly throwing a dagger at the goblin's head was enough to make it scurry back into the darkness. We now roll a d6 to see if we can recover that dagger. And again, I've rolled an odd number, so that dagger is also lost. I am down to just one. But that does end Rildo's turn. As always, we start by advancing the day tracker. Fargrim has a choice here. He can continue east or he can stay where he is and search and hope that he gets a secret door that lets him travel north. I am going to continue east for now, I think. Let's just see how that pans out. We've got plenty of time at the moment. In true Dungeon Quest style, it giveth and it taketh away. We got a T-junction, which is exactly what we needed, but all of the exits are blocked with doors. We will deal with that later on. For now, Thargrim moves into the room as normal and draws a room card. And he's drawn a spear trap. This is not good news for Thargrim. This is another card from the Catacombs expansion. Thanks, Antek. It says you have triggered a trap and razor sharp spear points come out of the walls all around you. On the floor are three stone plates one of which will stop the trap working. You have time to step on two of the plates, but you will die horribly if you make the wrong choice. The player to your right should take the d6 and place it on the table with either the one, two or three showing, covering it with their hand so you can't see which number they have chosen. You may then choose two numbers out loud. If one of them is the number on the dice, you have deactivated the trap. If not, your character is killed by the advancing spears and you are out of the game. Okay, I don't have another player who can pick a number for me, so we're going to do this in a slightly different way. We're going to use the combat cards. What I'm going to do is I'm going to randomly select one of the combat cards. I will then name two combat cards. If one of the cards I name is a match for the card that I have randomly drawn, then we have deactivated the trap. Same thing as with the dice, but using cards instead. There is our randomly drawn monster card, and I am going to name, slash, and leap aside. Here we go. <laughs> it was leap aside. We have switched off the spear trap. We are still in the game. That was a close call. I would have had no way of getting out of that if that card hadn't matched. That's the end of Thargrim's turn. He can breathe a sigh of relief. Rildo has to take a point of damage from his vampire bite. And now Rildo is going to search his location. He's hoping to find a secret door. And the good thing about Rildo, or sometimes the bad thing about Rildo, depending on the luck of the draw, he draws two search cards when he is searching, but you have to apply both cards. The first draw is a trap. That is not a good start. We have to take a trap card. And unbelievably, it's another spear trap, the same type of trap that Thargrim has just survived. This is the pointy dungeon of death. As before, we have randomly selected a monster combat card. I have picked Slash and Leap Aside. We need to match one of these cards or Rildo is dead. <laughs> and it's Leap Aside. We are still in the game. That's two for two on narrowly escaping instant death in the dungeon. Let's try to avoid having to do that a third time. Okay, we have resolved our first search card. We do get a second search card because of Rildo's special ability. And our second draw is a secret door that will allow us to move straight through the wall into the dragon's lair. Rildo is the first to make it to the center of the board. Because he has entered the dragon's lair, we get to immediately take two treasure tokens. I'm drawing these randomly from a bag. And that is not too shabby at all. That's a cup and some coins, each valued at 1,500 gold pieces. Good work, Rildo. But of course, dragon's gold comes with a price. We now have to draw 
one of the tokens from the dragon pile to see if the dragon wakes up and spots us. He does not, for now. The important thing about the dragon tokens is that as they are drawn, they are not returned to the stack. So each turn, the likelihood of the dragon waking up increases. I'm going to leave that token on the board there to remind me how many times we have risked a fiery death. But that is the end of the turn and the sun tracker advances. Thargrim needs to head north. He has to pass through a closed door. So the first thing we have to do is draw a door card. Frustratingly, the door is jammed shut. Our turn ends immediately. We will have to try again next turn. What kind of Chaos Warrior is Thargrim that he cannot put his shoulder through this rotting old dungeon door? Next up, it's Rildo's turn. We take a point of damage from the Vampire Bite. And honestly, because of that Vampire Bite, I think we really just need to try and escape now. I'm not even sure we can get out in time. Often it's a good idea to retreat back the way you came as much as possible because you know what you're advancing into. But the lack of corridors on Rildo's route to the center of the board means that he's just not going to get back out in time if he does that. And of course, that rotating chamber doesn't help matters either. So we instead are going to head west into the unknown and hope we just draw lots and lots of corridor tiles. We start with a portcullis room. That's not the worst thing that could have happened. It's not a corridor, obviously, but at least it is getting us in the right direction. Getting that vampire bite early has really caused us problems. Let's draw a room card and see if something nice happens. Ha! That's about as nice as it gets. Empty. The day tracker advances, but that is now the least of Rildo's concerns. Thargrim is going to try and break through the door to the north again, so we draw a door card. It's a trap. We immediately take d6 damage. That's a six, obviously. See, it's not just ones that I roll with unerring accuracy. It's whichever number I don't want to get. Thargrim is down to five hit points. If we hadn't had that ring of luck, he'd be dead. Oh, and of course, that dragon token I left on the board there, that now goes. Because Rildo left the dragon's lair, we reshuffle the token stack. Rildo takes a point of damage. It's so annoying that he is suffering from that vampire bite. He is one of the characters least likely to be bitten by a vampire because of his high agility. We're heading south. Just a regular room. No corridor. We draw a card. Empty again. It's almost like the dungeon knows it's done its work already. The sun advances. Thargrim, gnashing his teeth in frustration, headbutts the door repeatedly. And the third time is a charm. The door opens. We move through the door and we get to draw a new tile. And of course he gets a corridor, which is what Rildo really needed. We move into the tile and we immediately get to draw again. <laughs> and there it is. There's the dungeon quest we all know and love. That's the bottomless pit. It requires an agility test to not fall down. Thargrim has an agility of four. We place the tile. We move into the tile. We roll a d12 looking to get a four or less. And of course we do not have our ring of luck. How quick on your feet are you in all that chaos armor, Thargrim? The answer is quick enough. He's rolled a two against all the odds. He has defied the dungeon quest gods. He has survived the pit. The problem is, the pit leads directly into a wall, so next turn he's going to have to retrace his steps. It may be a case that he doesn't even make it to the dragon's lair. Next up, Rildo activates. He loses a life point from his vampire bite. Wouldn't want to forget that. And then he is going to head west because we really need to draw new tiles. We really need to draw corridors. And that is actually a corridor. That's amazing. We will get to immediately move on. We're going to advance into that space and then we will head south. And we have drawn a T-junction. Not a corridor, but the next best thing. We draw our room card and we have stepped on a crossfire trap. Arrows fire from the wall at us. We have to roll a d12 
minus our armor of four and take that many wounds. It may be a case that it doesn't matter whether there are any more corridors in the path ahead for Rildo. This could well be his final moments. His armor is four. We roll. That's an 11. 11 minus four is seven. We take a crossbow bolt in the face. Rildo dies on the spot. Well, his chances of getting out were slim anyway. I really thought it was going to be the vampire bite that got him. You go and stand over there, Rildo. Watch from the sidelines. We advance the Doom Tracker, and now Thargrim is going to head west, which means he will advance back through the corridor into the T-junction space. And even though we have been here before, we will still have to draw a room card. And of course, it's empty now. The clock advances, and we're going to continue heading west. We draw a room card. It's empty again. The sun advances. Thargrim heads west. We draw a room card. Empty. I guess, considering this is the way we came, that makes sense. The sun advances. There are 11 turns left of the game. Generally, it takes 10 turns to get back from the dragon's lair to one of the corner spaces, although of course that can be faster with corridors or slower with things like portcullises in the way. And I'm nowhere near the dragon's lair at the moment, so I think I really just have to head towards the exit, which is a little bit anticlimactic, but I'm so badly beaten up, I've only got 5 life points, I've only got 11 turns left, and I'm looking at probably a minimum of 6 turns to make it to the exit anyway, so I think I just have to limp out, looking a bit sad and pathetic. Rildo was really my best chance of gaining some glory on this particular run, and uh, he's got a crossbow bolt in his face, so uh, let's just see if we can get Thargrim home. His little chaos kids and his little chaos wife want to see him again. I'm going to head south. We draw a room card, and apparently fortune favours the cowardly, because I've just found 30 gold pieces worth of jewellery. The day tracker advances, and we're going west. We draw another room card, and it's empty again. It's almost like the dungeon knows that we are just limping out with our tail between our legs. Go on, head on out. Let all your friends know. The tracker advances, and we're going to go west again. Unbelievably, our room card is empty again. The sun continues to sink. I am going south. And we have to draw a room card. Uh-oh, it's another giant spider. There's clearly a nest of these around here somewhere. I can't really retreat. I don't want to move away from the exit, so I am going to have to fight. If you recall, I have to pick three numbers. I then roll a d6. If I roll one of the numbers I picked, I have killed the spider. I am picking the numbers one, two, and three. Let's see how we do. Nope, that's a five. I lose a life point and my turn ends. The sun goes down. I have to fight again. There's nothing I can do about this. I'm stuck in the fight now. I'm going to stick with the same numbers. One, two, three. That's a four. I lose another life point. I really don't want to die to a giant spider. That's so sad. The sun goes down a little bit more. Thargrim is slowly being wrapped up in a big web. One, two, or a three. That's a three. There we go. We slay the spider on the third time of asking. But as before, I don't think I get to take a turn as normal now. I think I just have to wait till next turn to advance. So we move the Doom Tracker. We have a tense moment here. I can either head south, in which case my fate will be determined by the draw of a tile, or I can attempt to go west, but that means I have to get through the portcullis. To get through a portcullis, you have to roll equal to or less than your strength. And my strength is seven, so that's not too bad. Let's do that. Let's, let's try and lift the portcullis this turn. Looking for a seven or less. And that is a six. I think the roll back off of the tile may have saved me there. But a six is good enough. We lift the portcullis and we can immediately advance into the next tile. We draw a room card. It's a mountain troll. That's good news. Um, I only have three wounds left. I am not well positioned 
for a long drawn out fight with a cave troll, I'm going to have to attempt to use the Helm of Terror, which does cost me another life point putting me down to two. I now roll the d6 four times, trying to score 13 or more. Two, not a good start. One, really, really not what I needed. We're at three so far. That's a four, that puts me at seven. So I need a six. And that's only a three. That puts me at 10. I put my helmet on, I go rah, and the mountain troll laughs at me. It's generally been a very embarrassing day for Thargrim. We now draw a monster card. We look under the attack heading to see what happens. Unbelievably, the mountain troll flees anyway if we look under the attack section of this card. So he runs off. That's pretty amazing. And in fact, incredibly lucky because if you go into a combat after using the Helm of Terror, you're a little bit uh, discombobulated and the monster gets to inflict D6 life points worth of damage on you whilst you recover, which almost certainly would have killed me. So that is a very lucky escape for Thargrim. The Chaos Gods are clearly on his side, but I don't know why. That's the end of the turn, so we advance the Sun Tracker. And at this point, I guess we just stagger south, out of the dungeon, back into the failing light as night approaches, clutching 150 gold pieces worth of fancy jewellery. That's it. Thargrim is out. Thargrim technically wins, but I'm really not sure you can call that a win. Poor Rildo, at least, was spared the fate of becoming a vampire and roaming the dungeons for all eternity. But right about now, he probably is a very nice meal for that mountain troll. And that is it. Game over. That was a roller coaster. Lots of things went my way. Lots of things didn't. I got to show you most of the cool things that the characters could do. Thargrim also has a meditation ability where he can miss a turn to regain a life point. It's not a very good ability. And I think in most situations, you're better off just pressing on anyway. Rildo's other ability is he has a better chance of getting through doors. Basically, when you draw a door card, any door jammed cards count as being open because he has some lock picking tools. But that's it. That is Dungeon Quest a full playthrough using all of the expansions and what a lot of fun. I love this game so much. It's superb. Even when a game goes like this and your heroes don't end up looking very heroic at all. But that is it from me for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider pressing the like button. If you've really enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully I'll see you all again very soon. Bye bye everyone. Bye bye.